Hey, so I was asked to do some reading in my normal voice, so I think I'll give that a try. Um, I'll just start with chapter two again. A huge red transport truck stood in front of the little roadside restaurant. The vertical exhaust pipe muttered softly, and then an almost invisible haze of steel blue smoke hovered over its end. It was a new truck, shining red, and in 12 inch letters on its side Oklahoma City Transport Company. Its double <clears throat> its double tires were new and a brass padlock and a brass padlock st stood straight up from the hasp on the big back doors. Inside the screened restaurant a radio played. Quiet dance music turned down low the way it was when no one was listening. A small outlet fan turned silently in a circular hole above over the entrance, and flies buzzed excitedly about the doors and windows, brighting the screen. Inside, one man, the truck driver, stood on a stool and rested his elbows on the counter and looked over his coffee at the lean and lonely waitress. He talked. <clears throat> he talked about the. He talked the smart, listless language of the roadside tour. I seen him about three months ago. He had an operation. Got something. Got cut. Cuts. Some, cut something out. I forget what. And she. Doesn't seem so long ago than a week I seen him myself. Looked fine then. He's a nice sort of a guy when he ain't stinko. Now and then the flies start now and now and then the flies roared softly at the screen door. The coffee machine spurted steam and the waitress, without looking, reached behind her and shut it off. Outside, a man walked along the edge of the highway, crossed over, and approached the truck. He walked slowly in front of it and put his hand out on the shiny fender and looked at the No Riders sticker on the windshield. For a moment, he was about to walk down the road, but instead he sat on the running board on the side on the side away from the restaurant. On the side away from the restaurant. He was not over thirty. His eyes were very dark and brown, and there was a hint of brown pigment in his eyeballs. His cheekbones were high and wide, and deep lines cut down into his cut down his cheeks in curves beside his mouth. His upper lip was long, and his in his teeth protruded. His lips stretched over to cover them, for this man kept his eyes closed. His lips closed. <laughs> His hands were hard, with broad fingers and nails as thick as, as thick and ridged as little clamshells. His space between his thumb and his forefinger and the hems of his and the hems of his hands were shiny and with, were shiny with callus. The man's clothes were new, all of them cheap and new. His gray cap was so new that his visor was still stiff and the, and the button was still on, not shapeless and bulged as it would have been when it had sir as it. Not as sha not shapeless and bulged as it would be when it had served for a while all the various pr purposes of a cap, carrying hat, towel, handkerchief. <laughs> His suit was of a cheap gray hard cloth and so new that the creases were in the trousers. His blue chambray shirt was stiff and smooth with filler. The coat was too big. The trousers were too short, for he was a tall man. The, co the coat shoulder peaks hung... The coat shoulder peaks hung down on his arms, and even and even the sleeves were too short, and the front of the coat flapped loosely over his stomach. He wore a pair of he wore a pair of new tan shoes, the kind the, the kind army the car, the, the, the kind called army last, hobnailed with uh, hobnailed with, with half circles like coarse shoes to protect the edge of the of the heels from wear. This man was on, this man sat on the running board and took off his cap and mopped his face. He then put on the cap and pulled it, <clears throat> and by pulling stirred the, the future ruin of, and by pulling stirred the future ruin of his visor. His feet caught his attention. He leaned down and loosened the shoelaces and he did not tie his hands again. Over his head the exhaust of the diesel engine whispered in quick puffs of blue smoke. Am I doing okay so far? I nobody can answer me, so I don't know why I'm asking. <laughs> um, Alright, well, I guess I'll keep going for a bit. Um, the music stopped, and in the restaurant, the man's voice spoke from the loudspeaker, but the, waiter, but the waitress did not turn him off. But the waitress did not turn him off, for she didn't 
for she didn't know the music had stopped. Her exploring fingers had found a lump under her ear. She was trying to see it in the mirror behind the counter without letting the truck, the truck driver know, so she pretended to push a bit of hair to, to neatness. The truck driver said, There was a big dance in Shahi and Shawnee. I heard someone got killed or something. You hear anything? No, said the waitress. And she lovingly flipped the and she and she lovingly fingered the lump under her ear. Outside, the seated man stood up and looked over the cowl, and looked over the cowl of the truck and watched the restaurant for a moment. He then backed. He, he then settled back on the running board, pulled a sack of tobacco and a book of papers from his side pocket. He rolled his cigarette slowly and perfectly and studied it, smoothed it. At last, he lighted it and pushed, and pushed the burning patch and pushed the burning match into the dust at his feet. The sun cut into the shade of the truck as, an, as noon approached. In the, in the restaurant, the truck driver pulled his bill and p in the restaurant, the truck driver paid his bill and put his two nickels change in the slot machine. The whirling, cinder, the whirling cylinders gave him no score. They fix him so they can't win nothing, he said to the waitress. And she replied, Guy took a jackpot not two hours ago. Three three eighty got. How soon you gonna be how soon you gonna be back by? He held the screen door a little. Week, ten days, he said. Gonna make a run to Tulsa, but I ain't but I ain't never get back as soon as I think. She said crossly, Don't let the flies in, either go in or come out. So long, he said, and pushed it in, and pushed his way. The screen door banged behind him. He stirred in the sun, peeling the wrap from a piece of gum. He was heavy, broad in the shoulders, thick in the stomach. His face was red and blue eyes. His face was red and his blue eyes and his blue eyes long and slitted from having squinted always at sharp light. He wore army trousers and high laced boots. Holding a stick of gum in front of his lips, he called through the screen, "Well, you don't. <clears throat> well, don't nothing. Well, don't do nothing." I <laughs> well, don't do nothing you don't want me to hear about. The waitress was turned toward a mirror on the back. She grunted a reply. The truck driver gnawed down the stick of gum slowly, opened it, opening his jaws and, and lips wide with each bite. He shaped the gum with his mouth, rolled it under his tongue in it while he walked to the big red truck. The hitchhiker stood up and looked across the windows. Could you give a could you give could you give me a lift, Mister? The truck driver. Oh, the driver looked quickly back to the restaurant for a second. Didn't you see no rider sticker on the windshield? Sure, I seen it, sir. But sometimes a guy'll be a good. Sometimes a guy'll be a good guy. Even if some rich bastard makes him care, makes him carry a sticker. <laughs> the driver, getting slowly into the truck, considered the part, considered parts of this answer. If he refused, now not only was he not a good guy, but he was forced to carry a sticker. He was not allowed to. Was not allowed to have company. <laughs> if he took the hitchhiker, he was automatically a good guy, and he also. And he also was was not one who whom any rich bastard. He was the. If if he took in the hitchhiker, he was automatically a good guy, and he was not. And also, he was not one whom any rich bastard. Any rich bastard could kick around. He knew he would. He knew he was being trapped. He couldn't see way. He couldn't see a way out. He wanted to be a good guy. He glanced at the restaurant. Scrunch down on the running board till we get you. Till we get round the bend, he said. The hitchhiker flopped down on. The hitchhiker flopped down out of sight, and clung to the handle. The motor roared up for a moment, and the gears kicked in, and the great truck moved away. First gear, second gear, third gear, and then a high whining. And then a high whining pickup and fourth gear. Under the, under the clinging man, the highway blurred dizzily, dizzily by. I don't know. I'm, I have no idea if anybody's even gonna read, watch this, or pay attention this far. So, yeah, that's me reading my normal voice. So, yeah. So hopefully it was okay. <laughs> anyway, ciao. <laughs> Peace out.